This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. In 2008, when the financial crisis exposed deep cracks in Canada's patchwork system of pensions, the Canadian Labour Congress made a bold proposal. Expand the Canada Pension Plan. It was actually so bold, it wasn't so bold, I, I should say, or so new. We had a policy in our books for many years to expand the CPP, but over the course of 2008 and 2009, we fully developed and costed out a detailed plan on how it could happen. How we could gradually improve the CPP on a go-forward basis so that future retirees would see improvements and improve CPP benefits. In fact, over a generation, our plan would ensure that today's young people had a good base pension they could rely on, especially if they didn't have the good fortune to work in a unionized workplace with a workplace pension plan. We began a campaign and took it to the politicians federally, uh, provincially, and municipally. It took a long time, but slowly and surely, public opinion, uh, media, and politicians began to believe that the time had come to seriously fix the looming problem of the vast majority of people not going to have, that are not going to have enough retirement income after a lifetime of work. But July of this year, the provincial premiers actually instructed their finance ministers to examine options for a modest expansion of the Canada and Quebec pension plans. The finance ministers, as you know, will be meeting right here in Ottawa next month, and this will be on their agenda. So tonight, we're going to explore some of the options to expand the CPP with an esteemed panel of experts and a great moderator to keep them on track. In fact, I think poverty is the issue at stake here. Because the reason we have pension is to avoid poverty in retirement. In Canada, <laughs> even if Canada ranks fourth among in the world for its uh, pension system, we still have 35% of people over age 65 who have to rely on the GIS. GIS is for people who earn less than $16,000 a year. That's uh, what we uh, determine as being the poverty level. It's definitely uh, uh, not exaggerated because who would want to live at this level? This is not, uh, it's not possible to live in dignity with just 16,000. So because of the existence of the CPP, the take-up rate of the GIS since 1973 has come down from uh, about uh, 56% to 35%. But now that the CPP and the QPP have reached their maturity, the 35% take-up rate of the GIS is not expected to reduce. So just in a nutshell, that's the main reason why we are talking about expanding the CPP. And uh, why would this be the only way to reduce poverty? It's obvious, if you don't force people to save, they will not save. Some people do save. A lot of people uh, buy RSPs, but most of them withdraw them before they get into retirement for a lot of uh, good uh, financial reasons. Fortunately, this uh, point has been well understood by those uh, who have to decide about what to do with poverty in uh, uh, seniors' ages in Canada. And uh, in June, 2010, the Ministers of Finance in Canada have reached an agreement in principle for a modest increase expansion of the CPP. So modest has not been defined, so we were wondering what would it be, just uh, going from 25 to 35 to 40? The CLC think that it should be at least 50%, and 50% is not exaggerated. The uh, maximum earnings on which the CPP apply is 50,000. So if the increase was just 40%, 40 percent, 40 percent of 50,000, that's 20,000, but that's the maximum. 50 percent of 50,000, that's 25,000, but not everybody's at maximum. The average CPP is about half of the maximum. So expanding the CPP from 25 to 50 percent, I consider that to be modest. And this would cost 
6% of covered earnings. 3% employers, 3% employees. So uh, some economists have argued that if you increase uh, the uh, contribution rate, some see that as a tax, that could affect the economy. It could. But uh, the CPP was reformed in 1998, and from 1996 to 2003, the CPP contribution rate was raised gradually from 6% to 9.9%. That's about a 4% increase, and the economy went very well in those years. I'm not saying that if we were to expand the CPP and uh, charge an extra 6%, the economy would go well or bad. We don't know. but it, we can say that just increasing the CPP per se would affect the economy. When you uh, would increase the CPP, all the money would be invested because uh, by virtue of some recent CPP amendments, any expansion must be fully funded. Fully funded means that all the money must be put ahead of time. It must be invested. Investing big amount of money is good for the economy. So that's the uh, main message I had for you tonight. It's not, there's no case for uh, increasing the GIS to uh, combat or alleviate further poverty. GIS is a good program. I like to compare it to uh, what could be called a Robin Hood approach, but there's enough of Robin Hood. We have to uh, listen to Confucius who said, if people are hungry, rather than giving them fish, learn them how to fish. So this is what the CPP expansion would do. OAS is not on the agenda tonight, but again, I will uh, cheat and speak uh, about something that's not on the agenda because the question has been legitimately raised. When uh, the announcement uh, made uh, some months ago, earlier this year, by the Prime Minister in Europe that the uh, eligibility age for OAS benefits would be increased to uh, 67, I was shocked because uh, the OAS needs to be revised, but not in that manner. There is a big problem with the, GI, the, the OS is that it gives uh, money to seniors just based on uh, residency tests. It's not based on a need, it's not based on a right. So the OAS badly needs to be changed by, in fact, totally remove it and replace it, or uh, at the same time revamping the GIS because the GIS uh, is doing a good job, but it's, uh, the poverty level could be increased from 16,000 to about 20,000. When the, my first exposure to this whole issue in, in the late 70s uh, with the Lazar Task Force on Retirement Income Policy, the United States had already legislated an increase in the age of entitlement from 65 to 67, but it wasn't gonna start for another 20 years and it would be spread out over 20 years. So at that point, that report, if you go back and dig it out, said Canada should think about the same thing because we projected exactly the kind of changes in the age structure then, the demographers are pretty good, that we're actually seeing. So this is not a, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, second uh, example is, is in the parliamentary committee in 83, you know, there was discussion about what do we do about the fact that the population is aging, life expectancy is increasing. And one of the uh, proposals, quite specifically, it was in the chapter on intergenerational fairness, is that the indexing of pensions should be tied not only to the CPI, actually it should be wage indexed, but also when the unemployment rate is high, and life expectancy is growing faster than expected, pensions should not grow as much and vice versa. And then we have in the 1990s, Sweden went through a major reform of its pension system, and among other things, the amount of pension that you draw from the public pension, the state pension at the time you start drawing, turn 65 or whatever, is a function of life expectancy in the country at that time. So there already are examples you know, there are three of them of different ways of thinking about this issue. Another one, just to throw out, which I confess I haven't analyzed or, or simulated, would be to say, well, instead of expanding the CPP in the way that Keith and I have described, say, well, if right now, if you defer your, starting your pension after 65, it gets bigger and bigger, but the latest you can defer it is age 70. What if we just say, well, we'll raise that age to 75 and it can keep getting bigger and bigger because one or both of you was mentioning what about incentives or things like that. So make the enlargement of the pension 
connected to in some way, taking it or starting it at a later age. You know, working some sort of creative option like that uh, is worth having a look at. <laughs>